Hello, everybody. Welcome to our final live presentation of day four. Welcome back to the 2021 initiation portal. Um, let me see here. Let me just bring Daniel over. So we're about to talk with Daniel Barber, who is going to speak to us about sound improvisation, a journey of mind, heart, and body. And this is going to be really powerful and paradigm shifting. So I can't wait to share this with you. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Let's see if you can unmute and turn on video. That'd be wonderful. And I'm going to go live on Facebook now. Hi, Daniel. Hey, how you doing? Good. Good to see you. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to, uh, it's nice to be here doing this. It's, um, yeah. It's, it's, it looks okay out my window, but not near as good as it looks where you are. It's very nice here. Yeah, it was like this crazy windstorm and rainstorm this morning, and now it's like beautiful. Just blew right through. Nice. Yeah, went, moved right, right past us. <laughs> well done, wind. Well done. <laughs> well, let me go live on Facebook here, get us started on the Facebook group. All right. And everybody, as you're joining, please go ahead and put your name and location in the chat. And Daniel, do you have a do you have a fun prompt for everybody? What else should they put in the chat? Uh, what no. what I would love to see is um, something that they find themselves doing now that they thought they wouldn't be doing at this point in their life. Mm, that is a great question. Okay, so put that in the chat too. Put something that you never thought you'd be doing right now that you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's actually two sides to it. There's, I guess there's two sides of the coin. It's like something that you're doing that you're like, wow, this is awesome that I'm doing this. And then the other thing is like, what do you find yourself doing that you thought you'd stop doing 10 years ago? Oh, okay, like, oh, okay. There, yes, I see the two sides. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The I wanted to do that or I actually don't want to still be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, why am I still doing that silly <laughs> why? thing? Yeah. Why is that pattern still here? Right, right. Okay. Good. So let's see. We're almost live on Facebook. There we go. We are live. Um, okay. Let's see. Welcome, Kathy in Ohio. Welcome, Nancy in California. Nancy is getting to combine internal family systems therapy and plant medicine work. Ooh, that sounds fun. Nice. Good work, Nancy. And Ludmila. Trans dance, trans dance events. Nice. I think that's what that says. <laughs> Let oh. me know if I'm wrong. Yeah, and, it looks like it. And hey, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Welcome. We got the Asheville crew in the house here. <laughs> we got the Jubilee crew in the house here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And so everybody, as you're commenting, as you're chatting on Zoom, um, make sure you're selecting all panelists and attendees. If it only says all panelists, then only Daniel and I can see your comment, but if it says attendees and everybody can see it. Okay, Brenda in Portland, I never thought I would be spending my entire days glued to a beautiful webinar and doing so much self care meditations. Yay, Brenda. That is a really good effect. <laughs> nice. A good festival to be having. I'm so glad to hear it. Peggy, I never thought I would still be teaching and so happy to continue. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad you're still teaching, Peggy. I'm very glad about that. Cool, so, and, 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 and you don't necessarily need to put it in the chat um, because, um, you know, it might be a little bit, it might be a little bit not the kind of thing you'd want to put in, out in public, but I also want you to think about something that you may be doing, like thoughts that you may have, sort of these, uh, a recurring thought that you kind of thought might, you might have sort of worked through, like something that you, you thought that you might have kind of worked out by now and you find yourself a little bit kind of bummed sometimes that, oh shoot, I'm still saying that to myself or I'm still doing, playing out this pattern that you sort of had hoped you had worked through already. So you can just think that, think that to yourself. Uh, that'll be helpful um, in our conversation today. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, let's give everybody just one more minute to join. And if you are just joining now on the Facebook group or on Zoom, um, we, Daniel posed a question for everybody. That's a really good one. What are you doing now that you did not expect to be doing now? 
I change it every time I say it, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, they're all good questions. <laughs> <laughs> they're all the different angles of the same question. Right, right. <laughs> yes. In this, in, in, this, in this kind of conversation, there are no bad questions, are there? Absolutely. All questions lead to the truth. Yep. <laughs> Okay, well, let's begin. Um, Daniel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this event. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm so honored and grateful and excited to get, about getting to do this. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you here. And so let me introduce you to everybody, Daniel. Um, so I'm going to read your bio, which is kind of it. Maybe you should read it. It's kind of in your in first person. Oh, is it? Okay. So um, I can read it. But I don't even have it. I don't even have it in front of me. So I'll read it. So just, just pretend Daniel's saying this as I say why don't you, it. Why don't, you, why don't you just go ahead and read it as if it's your bio? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perhaps more than ever, people are feeling unsure. The most valuable skill we could possibly learn is to navigate the unknown masterfully. I, I really like that. That's very true. Mm. I've spent, my, I've spent my career working with many wonderful and wise people addressing numerous persistent challenges facing individuals, communities, and society. I began my career in social work, did statistical analysis of social systems for a decade, and spent 15 years doing promotional videos for nonprofits. And I was a deeply engaged activist for campaign finance reform and against the death penalty. Throughout most of that, a central question was always, how do we get from where we are to where we want to be? After years of trying to fix the world, I had a series of epiphanies in 2001 pointing me toward my own healing work. I ended up playing music professionally and experiencing the transformational power of sound making for shifting energy and making connections. I now think my previous how question is unproductive and hobbled with paralysis by analysis, myopia, and other distortions. Very interesting. I find a more fruitful question is, what do I do now? This tends to direct us more immediately toward what we want to see as who we want to be. So my name is Daniel Barber and my spirit name is Two Trees. Since 2015, I've used a process I, I designed called Tap the Flow to help people quickly learn to improvise on piano, which reshapes their relationships with themselves and nurtures confidence and creativity in all areas of their lives. So there you have it, Daniel Barber, wonderful. That's really awesome. We have a lot in common. <laughs> we really do. This is great. Same life history. <laughs> <laughs> and so your topic for today, Daniel, is sound improvisation, a journey of mind, heart, and body. And um, I would love to start out just by asking you a couple questions to sure. so everybody can get to know you a little more. Sure. So um, what are one or two key learnings that you have gained on your path of life and your path to doing this work. Mm, oh, wow. Uh, well, we can wrap that one up pretty quick. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, one or two keys. I think one of the, I think one of the big ones, uh, I'll tell, I'll, this is kind of a, I guess, an opportunity to tell a quick little story. I had a, I had a, a, an, astrolog an astrologer tell me one time, probably it's been, it was mid eighties. And they said, um, uh, they had they had looked at my chart and and uh, gone over it a fair amount. And they said that when you were born, when you were manifest into the planet, you know, you were waiting in line, and they were giving out the the assignments. And you know, a couple of people ahead of you was like, okay, in this life, you need to learn courage and strength. And then you know, the trap door opened and out they went. And and then the next person came up and it's like, okay, in this life, you need to learn compassion, and and um, a service and trap door opened up whoosh, out they went and they said and and, the, and then you came up and they said the the person said uh, or the angel or whoever the heck it was said um oh my gosh this is the toughest one of all they said your 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 task in this life is to learn how to have a good time oh uh, yes <laughs> and, and i was like bam <laughs> that is wow that is so true and and that's one of the th i mean i'm still i still struggle with it quite a bit and and 
it's fascinating because I come across, you know, I have this sort of Leo son and I, I can come across in public very um, um, vivacious and energetic and, and smiley and so on. And I, that's kind of easy to do in a way, but in some ways it's really hard for me to really get it deep down that I'm, I'm here to enjoy myself and I'm here to look for things to do that can really be joyful and, and not have to worry about trying to fix the world all the time or to save the democracy or, you know, it's like, I had this idea a few weeks ago that I was going to, you know, go out and do this thing that I think could have made a difference in the, in the whole run up to the election. And I was on it. I was going to start doing it. And, and then it started to get real big and kind of heavy and kind of scary. And, and I was just like, ah, and it was a real struggle to get to the point to go, you know, it's okay if you don't do that. It's really okay if you don't do that. So yeah. Uh, that's that's a big learning that I'm still in the midst of. Yeah, yeah, that thing of having fun. It is, it is that's the hardest part of all. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and this year it's been challenging. You know, I think there's been a lot of times this year where a lot of us have said, well, you just got to laugh, you know, you just got to laugh because what else can you do? Yeah. So we can yep. try to return to that as much as possible. It definitely mm -hmm. helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and finding the, the, even if there's work involved, even if there's something involved, it's something like you're doing, you know, you're doing this, the, you're, you're doing this work that involves having conversations with people and you're, and you're, and you're bringing in people that you want to talk with. And so you're, it's like doing something that's really deeply enjoyable um, yeah. instead of something that's like this slog all the time, which is kind of how I was trained to think of work. Yeah, definitely a lot of us were trained that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Well, so one more question for you is, what is your vision for 2021 and beyond? Um, <clears throat> you know, this is a really interesting question to ask me, and, and it may end up being, uh, uh, it may end up being a bit of a, an embarrassing reveal. Uh, but one of the things that I actually have a challenge with sometimes is visioning something. I'm actually a really, I can really be a really good manifester, actually. If I do get a vision, if I get an idea of something, I'm really pretty good at manifesting stuff. It's really kind of ridiculous how good I can be at that. Uh, like, I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Are you kidding? Um, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, just big things that I've managed to manifest but I'm not great at just going, okay, so what does 2021 look like? Um, or what do I want my business to look like? Or, you know, um, like I, I get ideas from time to time and I'll get something and I was like, that'll get really clear. But a lot of times my prayer is just to be open to the present and to be open to what is for me now. And, um, but, you know, being asked the question, I kind of want to say it's going to be, um, it's going to be really rich. It's going to be loamy, you know, like people really digging into what's important um, and really digging into who they are, because I think that will be the option. Yeah, the <laughs> option. <laughs> I think that will be the option. I yeah. think, I think, I think, I think that, that is the path to life. I think if, I think if, if, if whoever isn't following that path to who, who they really are, that really authentic, like who I really, who my soul really is, I think it won't be possible to kind of continue. I mean, I think it'll just, things could just get too hard to, to really make it through if you're not really plugged into the planet and plugged into yourself. Definitely. Yeah. We've had a few talks about authenticity and our, you know, the, the true self, and it does see, I mean, of course, that's always an important theme, but it seems like this year, I, I, I think we've been really forced to look at what are my values, what is really most important to me, and, and cut away the rest. We just talked to Khadija, Khadija about this in the last interview, and, um, and then what that leaves us with is, who am I really? What really matters? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's really up for us, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, I kind of love the question because I don't, like I say, I don't usually think in those kinds of terms, but, it, but it, that feels true. Um, and another thing that just popped into my head is years ago, maybe 20 years ago now, a friend asked, 
uh, when, when we were kind of talking about the collapse <laughs> that we've been anticipating for so long now. And, um, and she said, so what do you think is going to help us get through? And I didn't, th I didn't think about it. I hadn't really thought about it that much um, in the, like really in terms of like, what would it be? And, and so, I, and I didn't think about it. It just, the word came out. I was just like immediately said community um, is, is, is how we'll get through as community. So I think there's a lot of, I think there's going to be a lot of that also like authentic, authentic um, self-awareness and who I am and also really authentic connections with others. Yeah, beautiful. And I, and both in person as well as online, like this amazing community here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah the, the, I read a book in years ago called the global brain. So I've, I've often had a, an image in my mind of, of humans being the nervous system of the planet. And, oh, yeah. and, you know, it's like, we are the, we are the, we are the brain of the planet. We're the, we're the, we're the nervous system. Um, and, and, you know, we carry information around the system and, uh, and, and so this whole, I've always thought of the, of the internet as the nerve, you know, as the nerve system of the, of, and, and so the whole idea for me of being online like this, uh, doesn't feel super uncomfortable to me because it's just like, oh, well now this is what happens. <laughs> you know, this is how we right, start. Right, this is next. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like, it's kind of great for the birds and the trees because, you know, there's not so many cars and planes and it's like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cool in, in that way. Definitely. Well, tell us about sound improvisation. <laughs> I'm so excited to, for everybody to dive into this today. Well, um, so um, the, the, the reason that I asked the, the, the question earlier about what's happening with you that maybe is still continuing to happen, um, you know, a lot of us in, in, these, in these kinds of circles have done a lot of work on ourselves. You know, we've done a lot of therapy and we've done a lot of shamanic work perhaps, and we've done a lot of stuff to try to work through the, our, our patterns or our training so that, we can, so that we can move into different ways of being. And, and um, you know, as a social worker and as a social scientist, I, I've spent a lot of my life, like, like, like you have in, in your bio, um, asking that question, <laughs> how do we get from where we are to where we want to be? You know, it's like, it's easy enough to sort of look and go, oh, here's the situation. You can measure it and you can see it and describe it really to, in fine detail. Um, but there's this assumption sometimes that just because we see something um, that we will be able to you know, get to the better place. And, and that is obviously a huge, a huge leap. Um, and I had a philosophy class uh, in a philosophy class in college. Uh, one of the things that I remembered from that class was the professor said, um, uh, hypotheticals, you know, if questions, if only if this happened, uh, then, you know, if, 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 if we could do this, then this could happen. He said, that isn't really a productive, it isn't a productive way to think because that's not what is the if thing isn't. And so the real question is, how do we get from where we are now to where we want to be? And so that's been a question in my mind all along. And so I've always wondered, you know, whether studying social systems or people and or our own, our own programming and like, how do I get from, from, from this place of like struggling so much to having a good time and actually being a useful <laughs> member of society. And one of the things that, I, that I've learned over the last few years, I guess it's the second part of your earlier question, is that sound is an unbelievably powerful force. It's, a, it's an incredibly powerful force. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this a little bit in a, in a presentation. I've got a little PowerPoint that, that I could do to sort of take us through. Is that cool? Um, so um, why don't we go ahead and, and do that now? This might be a good time for it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Here, let me give you ability to share. There we go. Okay, so are you are you seeing the the slide on the whole screen? I don't see it yet. No. You're not seeing it. No. Uh, do I have to click the share the box? Oh, do I need I need to share it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you gotcha. Okay. Um, there we go. Is it there now? 
All right. So <clears throat> so like like you mentioned earlier, the most essential skill you could possibly learn at this time is to navigate the unknown masterfully. And when we don't do this well, we become victims of our circumstances and our past, and we fall prey to old habits, generational patterns, beliefs and strategies that were formed long before in another time. And we get confused and frustrated when things don't seem to flow very well. And if this continues unaddressed, it can lead to boredom, dissatisfaction, discouragement, and regret. I love that picture. <laughs> You have this on your website. I cracked up hysterically the first time I saw that on your website. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, learning to, masterfully, learning to masterfully navigate the unknown plants you deeply in the blessings of living. Woohoo! <laughs> that that's way more fun. <laughs> that's way more fun. <laughs> Yeah, and you resonate naturally with the gifts of love and grace. So clearly, we're at a unique moment in history, and not just for the reasons that you're probably thinking of right now. In only the past hundred years have we learned, well, parts of us have learned, that fundamentally, reality consists of energy and matter trading places with each other, probabilistically. And so the future is, in essence, unpredictable. It's unknowable, fundamentally. And biochemistry now suggests that the only thing that makes you truly unique is literally the way you perceive the world. I could get into that more. It's really fascinating uh, wh what they have um, found to, to come to this conclusion. Wow. Uh, but, but that is the thing that makes each of us unique from each other is, is the way we perceive the world. That is the thing that makes us unique. So the question becomes, how can we adapt and function and get all our various needs met, like for security and connection and fulfillment, knowing that each thing we know always leads to a whole bunch of other things we don't? And how can we all share and benefit from our unique and precious gifts so we can make the difference we most want to make? And what's sound got to do with it? Well, when the terrain is this weird, <laughs> it helps to have a compass that keeps bringing us back to three foundational questions that can ground us as we go. The first question is, what's happening now? The second, who am I now? And the third, what do I do now? And I flesh these out into what I call the Holy Trinity of Improv which is part of this process that I created that uses music improvisation to help people connect with their creative genius and their innate musicality so they can ground in their true nature and express themselves authentically in any given moment. So by attending to this flow of energy running through us and expressing ourselves authentically with sound, we plug in beneath our monkey minds which is part of the challenge, right? How do we get underneath that monkey mind yeah, sure. and connect with ourselves and each other through direct experience? And in the midst of that lie the seeds of possibility. As the physician and scientist Hans Jenny put it, the more one studies these things, the more one realizes that sound is the creative principle and it must be regarded as primordial and that no single phenomenon or form has the power to originate things, but that this power is inherent in tone and in sound. So many of you may have seen this kind of a thing, but this is a, um, a Kolodny plate. So this is just a, a platter with salt on it that they're applying a tone to, and they're going to change the frequency of the tone. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Isn't that, isn't that cool? That is so cool. I've not seen that before. You haven't? No. Yeah. This is what sound does. So you can hear her calling frequencies in the background. Isn't that wild? 
And so when I first saw this, I was uh, uh, um, um, talked to a guy, uh, John Stuart Reed, who is one of the leaders in this field of, of um, cymatics, um, and which is the visualization of sound. And he said, before the, micro, the, before the microscope, we had no conception in our minds about the microscopic world. You know, we just didn't think it existed. And he said, this, this type of a device is, gonna, is now beginning to make it possible for us to envision and imagine that sound does have an impact in the world that's far beyond what we've ever really imagined. So, um, so then it would be no accident that sound initiates creation in creation stories around the world. And God said, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Brahman, with whom was the word. In the center of the universe, she sang over and over again in creation stories around the world. Sound is the initiating force. So the first step in this holy trinity is to listen carefully. It's first, and it's vital to keep coming back to again and again, deeper and deeper, more and more. Listen for the sound itself, beyond the labeling, as if you'd never heard it before and have no idea where it comes from. Because actually, you don't. What is happening now? The second step is to feel deeply. Ask yourself, what is the feeling in my body now? Is there a message for me within that feeling? What is the deepest, most true experience I'm having right now? Who am I now? The third step is to play it out. So you make a sound that as best you can is the sound of what you're feeling and experiencing or the one you're most wanting to hear right now or the sound that seems to be wanting to come through you now. It's a decision. What do I do now? When you make the sound, it expands inward and outward and starts moving things, right? So then listen again for the first time. Listen to the call of bird, bear, and bee, wolf, River, refugee, all our relations feel so deeply you become your yearning. Play your song so it reverberates and you can hear yourself mattering. Thank you. So that's, Very that's the powerful. idea. That's the idea. Yes. Hmm. So should we invite the audience to give it a try? We could do that. We could do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. what, what, what I questions first. What, what, uh, sure. Um, <laughs> thanks Fabiola. Um, that was a, an amazing presentation. Loved it. Well, well, it's it's um, it's an interesting that I I came to this as a part as musician, but really kind of more activist. You know, it's like how do we make a difference? How do we get from here to there, right? And and so often the social phenomena are just a 
an expression of a bunch of individuals doing things. And if we're not healed, if we're not really whole, and if we're not really connected to ourselves, then, then the social world can't really play itself out well. And sound is just such a great bridge between, between my monkey mind and my gut. Uh, and, uh, and the drum has changed my life. And so has, you know, the piano and singing and so many other things. And so it's, sound is a, is a wonderful tool. It definitely does go beyond words. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, you know, here's, here's something that I'd like to mention. And I, I would like to do some kind of interactive kind of thing. Um, and maybe we can do a little like playbacky thing. Is that like improv, a little improv game okay. kind of stuff? Is that cool? Yeah, that would be cool. Yes. All right. So let, let's, we'll do that in a second. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, um, mention a, a couple of things that I think are interesting about, um, about sound in general. And that is that um, there are different physical characteristics. I could get into the whole acoustics of, of sound waves and stuff, but I won't. But um, the quick thing is that, that um, if you play a couple of notes up here, like those two notes right there, they, may, you know, they sound kind of like awful together, <laughs> right? Like, ah, no, it sounds like a horror movie. And, and, uh, and so, um, but I'm gonna, you know, and people talk about wrong notes and all this. And it's like, you know, it's just a note. It's just, it was born and it was, you know, they stretched the string this tight and it's just like doing what it's done, you know, doing what it was asked to do. Um, and so any judgments that we have in our minds are, we're creating those judgments. Um, but also just in terms of the overall physics of this stuff, if you p start playing notes that are lower in frequency than these two notes, um, then it can change our perception of those two notes. So just playing these two now, but now somehow these two sound better. Sounds prettier, yeah. It's prettier, yeah. It's kind of lovelier. And if I add, if I add this one down here and this one, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's flowy. It, it somehow, it harmonizes better now, but it's the same two notes. So there's something about context. And so one of the things that I think is really helpful sometimes is to look for, and, and you can think of, of these two, like, uh, you know, here's a Republican and here's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> and so what can be really helpful, I think, um, is to find a lower note. Like, what's the lower note that, that is true for both of these, right? So what's the lower notes down here that can, that can provide the context that can help um, these two sort of see themselves as important pieces of a puzzle? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So. Interesting. And, and what would you say for... Um, I mean, I guess it can be any sound, right? So if we're not good at singing, that's okay. If we can't play the violin, it's okay, right? Any, <laughs> any more advice on that? Like it's the, the yeah. sounds that are possible. Like, I guess it's just infinite, right? It is, it is. And, and the process that I do is, uh, is I've used it with, um, with people on piano and on guitar and voice and, um, Native American flute, drums, um, but it's really, it was really designed for the piano. Um, there's a couple of things about it on the piano that are, that make it like, it just works a whole lot better on the piano. Uh, and one of the reasons is that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, do you know, do you play the piano, Jocelyn? I don't, no. You don't? Nope. So, so um, uh, would you like for me to show you how? Sure. <laughs> I can show you really quick. Okay. I mean, it won't take much time at all. So you, so you take the, the, all these notes, you just call these things notes, and you, you take your finger and you push it down. <laughs> yes. Well, that, it's yes, great. my seven-year-old does that, and she does great. She's like, plays these beautiful songs. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and so that's, that's, that's how you play the piano. Um, and, and there are a couple of things that can get tricky about it. 
Um, but I can literally show people how to play in any key on the piano in, in an hour. Hmm. And at the end of the hour, they will know how to improvise on the piano in any key. Um, and I've, and I've had people that, that started, you know, that they'd struggled with, with it and they, we did that little thing and then like they're off and running and they're composing and, you know, and feeling wow. completely comfortable with it. Um, and so that's one of the things that I think is really nice about the piano. You've got 10 fingers and so you can do, you know, you can. You know, you can do a lot of. You can do a lot of things on it because you've got so many fingers and so many possibilities and such a wide range of harmonies and it's so easy to play, you know, it's not a bassoon. And, and so, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't help you if you wanted to play the bassoon. Um, but um, so, so this, and I just happened, it was my first instrument. And so when I started coming up with this idea and this technique, it was originally just to help adults get back on the piano. Uh, and then I realized that it's actually a much bigger possibility here to um, really step in and um, um, uh, like do a little little um, self therapy or something. Yeah. Can I can yeah. I show can I show that a little bit and then maybe we can do a little a little bit of uh, chopsticks. Yay! Um, yes. <laughs> and Ibtisam says, I wonder if you can provide background score during the presidential debates. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah, I can't believe I said that. Ah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <The> horror music. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of. <laughs> yes. So yeah, um, give us a an example here. So I want to I want to just show you what's possible, and then we can do a little improv game. Um, so the, basically the way this, this works, um, you know, I mentioned the Holy Trinity of improv to listen and feel and play. And so, um, the, the listening, um, sit down and, and, uh, we'll do a little, we can do a little exercise with this too, actually around listening. Um, and it's just good to sit and, and pay a few seconds to just listen to the sounds in the room and just see what's happening in the room wherever you are and then feel into your body and and just start uh, i know you had somebody that was doing some intuitive piano stuff and i didn't get to see that presentation but i, I i'm oh I yeah can't. we have the recording yeah olivia she, it was really beautiful i, I want to see that yeah i definitely yeah. want to see that yeah, yeah. um and that's kind of, I mean, this is, this is intuitive playing. You're just, you're really listening and you're going, okay, what's, what am I? And so I'll kind of verbalize it like I wouldn't normally, but like I'm feeling a little bit of nervousness right, right now, just because we're doing this and, and generally feeling um, grateful and generally relaxed, but I'm noticing this little thing. So there's this, you know, there's this little, uh, And each and each each time along the way, one of the problems that happens, one of the things that happens, <clears throat> is that we start trying to play music. And so when you start playing, so when you start trying to play music, and then you're like doing this, like, okay, what would sound good after? You know, it's like uh, instead of instead of like really continuing to stay with the body, we sort of go off into fantasy land. And we play something lovely because it's lovely. And it's like, oh, well, that's nice. Well, I'll just kind of shut down and I'll just play something lovely, right? And it's, a, it's an interesting thing to dance. It's a really interesting thing to dance because it's really a meditation practice. And, and what you're really doing is, is no mind, you know, is, is, is trying to be a no mind and trying to be super present and like whatever the present says. And you might be in the middle of doing this. And then all of a sudden this thought happens like, <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's, just letting it come through like whatever it is right whatever it is just let it come through 
And, and the gift in that is that you get to listen as if you're, as if you are separated from the experience, you know, you're, you're having a relationship, but you're in, you're by yourself. It's a safe environment. You know, you're by yourself, maybe if nobody's in the house or whatever, but you know, you're, you're, you're safe and you're, you're going into some therapeutic or whatever kind of stuff, but it's, um, it's a relationship. And so you get to, you get to go, Oh, so uh, when I did that thing, it's like, is that really what it sounded like? Or was it more, and, and, and so then you're, you're checking yourself and you're, you listen and you feel and then you play and then you listen again. Was that it? No, it wasn't. It's was kind of like this. And it's like, okay, is that it? Yeah, okay, cool. Now go with that. And then you just sort of continue on. Um, and so it becomes this real fascinating um, kind of trippy, you know, relationship experience with yourself. Yeah. So, the, yeah. Amazing. I, so my question is, how does this benefit us? Because I know it does. I would love uh, to have you share about that. Well, um, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways. I mean, for one, the, the first, the first one is that um, you get to see how your mind works. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we get to see that often. Um, but one of the things that we don't get to see is, um, is to see that in the context of sound making. And one of the things that sound making does, and for, for unfortunate reasons that the piano does, is that a lot of us have judgments about the piano. A lot of us had lessons as kids, and we have a lot of associations with the piano. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of judgment that comes up around the piano. And so if you're just doing this thing, uh, those judgments will show up and 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 you have to you have to you know i've gotten to the point now to where i can play pretty decent music you know most of the time um but when i i struggled for years around improv i wanted to be able to improv on the piano and i never had training and i i literally kind of didn't play for 20 years because i couldn't stand the way it sounded and um like i <laughs> i told a minister that i used to work for uh that that uh, my, when my wife came home, I'd stop playing. And he said, well, that's why she left you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that. I was like, I would not, I would not allow anybody to hear my playing. And it was, it had to be perfect. I was a, I was a good classical player as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, so I, my standards were really high. And so matching those standards with what I could do improvisationally was a gulf. It was just huge. And so those judgments were merciless. Wow. And, and so it, it took um, a, a lot of, a lot of being and a lot of being with it. And so that's one of the things that I think I can help people with okay. is that I know what that looks like. And I can, I think I can quicken the, that process for, for people. So that's one benefit is just that awareness of, oh yeah, my, my mind will. And, and, and another example is that if you're trying to play a particular thing and you keep kind of hitting the wrong note, it's interesting to notice how our brains are actually programmed that sometimes you have to really slow down and just like train your fingers what to do. And so that's another kind of like how, how to program yourself so that you repeat stuff and, and do it consciously. Okay, beautiful. Well, should we create an experience here? Sure. Yeah, yeah, let's do, let's do. Um, so, so we get, I mean, I can be one, but should we get a few volunteers or how, like, can we do that with more than one person or what do you think? You know, sound, sound over this is, uh, over Zoom is, is kind of funky, but we can, we can invite, we can invite people to, to, um, uh, to do this, you know, to do it at home. Uh, and, um, and, you know, we can, are you okay? Uh, we can have somebody else be a volunteer if you want somebody else to come in and, and, um, and, and be vocal. I mean, if anybody, yeah, if anybody is, wants to come on, they can, if not, I can, I'll do it. I'll be, you know, I don't have it. I don't really, I, I could get the drum actually. 
could get the drum, but I'll be like calling like a crow or something like that, you know? Okay. <laughs> that would be one of, you know, All right. calling like a wolf or something like that. What? <laughs> well, my I, sound of choice. I think that's good. I think that's good. And, and what we can do, why don't we, why don't we do a, a pairing and we can demonstrate a little something? How's that? And then, and then if other people want to play, we can do that uh, after, like next. Okay. Next. And Peggy's raising her hand too, so. Oh, good, Peggy. So should I, I, should I bring her over now or wait? She says sure. I can't. Bring, bring, bring Peggy in. Okay, come on over, Peggy. We got the whole Asheville crew right here. Got the, oh, this is it. <laughs> this is awesome. You're looking very still today, Peggy. There, there she is. Are. Oh, we can't hear you yet. Let me, um, I think I have to unmute you. There we go. Okay. Hey there, stranger. Hey, welcome, Peggy. <laughs> so I've been calling, I started a few weeks ago, as I call the directions, I started hearing these tones. And so now every morning when I do the directions, I listen. And it's been astounding because sometimes, you know, I, the, the tones that come through me sound like the element, like the water. Sometimes I feel like I'm underwater. It's been wild. It's, it's quite, quite a journey. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. And that just started recently. Yeah. Well, I started it, I don't know, one of the classes I was teaching, either October or September. I was calling the direct, it must have been September, because uh, I was calling the directions you know, at the beginning of each class. And one morning before class, these tones started coming through. So I started doing it every week when I was so great. Class. That's so, so great. Yeah. So that's I'm so still cool. <laughs> I've never had that. I've never had that experience. That's really cool. Uh, the it's, it's, it's interest. It really is interesting what happens when we really tend to listening, like really make it a focus. It's like, okay, I want to listen more deeply because, you know, initially, the brain just says, what do you mean, listen more deeply? I'm hearing what I'm hearing. You know, it's like, you, how can you hear something that, <laughs> you know, it's like you just hear what you hear. Um, but it, it is interesting how tuning into that direction somehow um, opens mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Neat. Well, um, so maybe we can do a little, maybe we can do it. You know what? Let's do it this way. So, um, uh, Two of, two of us will do a little prompt and response thing. And then the third will be an observer and give a little feedback. How's that sound? Sounds good. That cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, um, all three. There we go. So, um, three visible at the same time here. So, oh, okay, good. So, so Jocelyn, do you want, would you like to be the, the, the caller and responder for, for this sure. first go around? Okay, so um, I said caller and responder. Uh, why don't you Why don't you be the responder? I'll do I'll do a couple of calls, and you can like make a sound in response, just whatever okay. sound comes to you. And it'll be interesting to hear um, what you notice about the whole thing, Peggy. Okay. So um, it's and what very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'll do is I'll tell I'll I'll say something that's true for me, and then you can just make the sound. Okay. So I'm feeling curious and excited about this conversation. So I make a sound that is whatever comes up for me in response for that. Yeah, uh, you, 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 you make, you, you reflect it in sound. So you make curious and excited for this conversation without words. Okay. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I told you it was going to be weird stuff. <laughs> That's, believe me, honey. Um, <laughs> I was in an improv theater company for many years. That, that was just, <laughs> that was good. That was perfect. So, so uh, let me, let me uh, proceed. So, and I am, um, I'm nervous and um, feeling a little bit of, of digginess. I don't know how to put it. It's like digging in the dirt around 
election stuff? Ooh. Do it again. Ooh. Uh huh. Um, and one more. Um, and um, um, I haven't spoken to my brother in several weeks, and I'm kind of knowing that I should and finding it hard to pick up the phone. I got into my mind too much with that. One. <laughs> I was telling too much of a story. <laughs> call, call, call. <laughs> yeah, you predicted that one. <laughs> the crows are circling. Better call him. <laughs> So, so Peggy, what did you notice about that, that whole thing? Well, the, the caw, caw, caw was just hilarious. I mean, it really, I, I know that you put some thought into it, but it was absolutely perfect. But yeah, the, the tones that, uh, the sounds that you made, Jocelyn, were, I mean, really very, they were very close to what I think I would have made um, with a sound. I mean, it just, it really felt like you embraced the words that he said. You turned those words into a sound. Mm -hmm. And probably most humans on the planet would, would say, probably say the same thing. It's like, oh, I know what she was saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, have, I have at times done exercises with clients where, um, I'm not going to say that around. Let's just switch it around. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, we'll just do another one. So, um, so Jocelyn, would you like to um, be the caller for Peggy and I'll observe? Sure. Okay, let's see here. Um, this is harder for me. <laughs> so, okay. Um, tree leaves swaying in the wind on a warm summer's day. Beautiful. Okay, next one. Um, I'm feeling concerned because my kids are home and I'm working. It's 3 p.m. and I haven't given them lunch yet. Ah! <laughs> yes, very accurate. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, the full moon next to Mars on Halloween night. So, so it's, it's one of the things that I noticed about all of those is that the sound, the, the, and thank you both. Um, the, what I noticed is that the sound conveyed the feeling of the scene, right? It was like the, um, might, might have seen leaves on trees, you know, might have seen the full moon, but definitely got the feeling of the situation. Uh-huh. You know, definitely got the feeling of it. And, so when we talk about what's true, you know, when we're, when we're, when we're exploring um, our day or, you know, world situations or whatever, and, and we have these conversations about what's true, and we talk about facts and blah, blah, blah. Um, when I was doing death penalty work, uh, one of the things that I learned is that, um, you know, eyewitness testimony is unbelievably flawed. Uh, you can have two different people watching the exact same event and have them tell the story and it will be dramatically different. A lot of times mm -hmm. there will be differences in important points. And, um, and so our, what is true isn't as easy to identify as we usually think as, as certainly as our brains think, because our brains want to lock something down so that we can feel safe. Um, but if we can learn to 
say that what's true for me is, is what, I'm, what I'm really experiencing, what I'm really feeling, um, then there's a, I think there's a lot more potential for connection with each other, for one thing. Um, you know, you and I may disagree about a particular point, but we both feel really strongly about caring for the children, or we both feel really strongly about creating an environment where people can be heard or whatever, you know, there's going to be other areas underneath where the particular disagreement, you know, is, uh, mm -hmm. that is really true. That's really the truth is that, you know, we love each other or something, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to to describe that sense of connection that's actually true. Um, and so, you know, the truth comes out through these sounds. It's kind of what I noticed. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Mm. Definitely does. Um, so um, I would like to do a little listening exercise. You guys up for that? Uh, sure. And this can and this can be for everyone. And I don't know if, if if there's any questions maybe in the in the comments that I should address or. Um, I don't think I see any questions. If anybody does have questions, go ahead and put them in the in the chat or the Facebook comments. Um, somebody was saying, "My son plays by heart, by ear, by soul. Mm. He started when he was four. It was a good way of communicating his emotions and thoughts without words. It was always so powerful. Wow. He never took lessons. His music sounded like soundtracks for the soul." Wow. Wow, Leah, that's really beautiful. It is. What a blessing. And you know, that is that is really that is really something that I think that we um we all have access to. And we've kind of it's kind of been trained out of us, but we really do have access to that. Um, um so uh I'd like to do a, a, a listening uh meditation. It'll be about 10 minutes ish. And um, um, we can have a little reflection time after that, if you like. Is that, is that, I don't know how, I don't know what our time is like, but is that, do we have time for that? Yeah, I would, I, I do need to close by about 6.40. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so, so 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it looks like it's getting dark over there. It's getting a little dark, yes. <laughs> well, um. So thank you. I I I will uh, I'll keep my eyes on the on the clock, and this part won't go for more than ten minutes. Okay. So um, uh, I invite you to close your eyes, and um, you don't have to, but um, this is so much about sound, and I just find that whenever um, I'm focusing on sound, um, I have a much deeper and richer experience when I'm not. Um, sort of cluttering my brain with visual data. I have a quick question, Daniel. Is mm -hmm. this for everybody? Yes, this is for everybody. Okay. Yeah, this is for everybody. Sorry. All right. about that. Peggy, do you want to stay that. here and hang out on this side? Sure. <laughs> okay. I'm fine. <laughs> cool. So good to see you, Peggy. I haven't seen you for a long time. I know. I miss you so much. <laughs> I, I mean, me too. Let's, let's, let's get together for lunch or something sometime soon. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is for everyone. And I invite you to close your eyes, make yourself comfortable. And what we'll do is basically listen to the sounds in your local environment. And I'm going to be, it's a guided meditation. So I'll be talking. So you'll be hearing my voice. So just listen for what you are hearing. And as you notice the sounds, see if you can listen to the sounds as if you had never heard them before. And you had no idea where they're coming from. And if you're like most of us, that's pretty impossible. Um, our minds 
are very, very quick to identify and explain to us, tell us stories about those sounds that we're hearing. And that is a very, very good thing. Because that mind is the mind that helps us know when there's a tiger coming around the corner or there's food that we could catch if we get it soon enough or some other kind of something that's happening in the environment that we need to know about to stay safe, to stay alive. So it's a very good thing for staying safe. So a way to proceed here is to give a nod of gratitude to your mind for being so vigilant and faithful in your service. Thank you for all that it does to help keep you safe and alive. And now you can ask that part of you, your mind, if it would be willing to relax a little bit, because right now you are safe, hopefully well fed. You're okay for the next few minutes. And that what you would like to do is to have a different kind of experience that you usually don't have. You would like to listen to the sonic qualities of the sounds themselves. As if you were an oscilloscope you're just registering pitches, timbres, any rhythmic qualities. And as you listen to these sounds, imagine yourself walking across a field. Beautiful day, wildflowers, and you're hearing these sounds that you're hearing now. And as you walk across this field, you notice that there's a, a river in front of you flowing from one side to the other. As you get close to the river, you notice that there's a bridge reaching from the other side of the river to your side. You walk towards that bridge. And you notice as you get closer to the bridge that all these sounds you're hearing are coming to you from across that bridge. You go up and stand at the edge of the bridge with your arms open in a receptive pose. And you see the sounds gathering on the other side of the bridge from places unknown on the other side. And they scrunch up together and float across the bridge towards you. And when they reach you, you hear them. And 
and you stand there and express a small note of gratitude for the little gifts that each of these sounds leave with you as they float by. It's an ongoing flow. More and more sounds gathering from places unknown on the other side of the bridge and floating across towards you. When they reach you, you hear them. And they leave a little gift for you. You feel your gratitude for the ability to perceive these gifts, to hear these sounds, to be amazed at wherever these things are coming from. You notice that in addition to the sounds, there's also images and thoughts and impressions that are floating across this bridge towards you. And when they reach you, you experience them, you perceive them. And they leave little gifts as they float on by. So you soak all this in, you feel your gratitude for all of these gifts, all of these amazing things coming to you from the other side, your ability to perceive them. You bow towards the source of them. You bow to the bridge, to the other side, to the river, to yourself. Take a couple of steps back and turn and go on your way. And when you're ready, you can come back to this place. So thank you for um, offering your time to give that gift to yourself. Thank you, Daniel. That was really beautiful. Mm. Really cool. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Would anyone like to comment on your experience with that? I'd love to hear. Fabiola says, very nice journey. I compared the sounds with animals. Oh, an engine with a lion. Ah, oh, mm. nice. <laughs> Cool. Playing with the interpretations. Mm -hmm. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I'm I'm curious what I'm curious um, about any any thoughts about that whole idea of listening without labeling. Because um, that really gets into the the some of the fine areas right around the conscious mind and the, and the unconscious mind. It's like, how do you navigate that when the sub unconscious mind works so quickly? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you relax that? I thought the part where they were leaving me gifts was really interesting. Mm. Like that brought a different dimension in and they were leaving me these beautiful little random things that I, you know, there's, there was no logical way that it was, connected but it was beautiful like mm, cool. one sound left me a red balloon and another sound left me a little snail in a little shell and like i don't know what that means but, <laughs> that's awesome but it was really yeah maybe you'll find out later maybe. <laughs> when, when you mentioned the gift i um i heard tones coming and it was like a butterfly kissed me on the cheek and just kept on going and so the gift was the kiss as the butterfly went by. Yeah. Nice. It was really beautiful. Thank nice. you. 
Nice. Well, you know, I, I, I appreciate this opportunity to share this stuff. Uh, when I, when I really start to step into to these experiences, I, I have to realize that, <clears throat> you know, it's a ridiculous miracle that we exist at all. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And, and, and it's amazing to me to get to the place and just to remind myself that, you know, the processing that goes on in the brain to just actually hear something uh, or to touch something and feel it and to have, a, you know, and have an impression of any of this stuff is pure magic. How this, any of this works and to be able to step into that truth and to really live inside of that truth, you know, that there's these things that come to us, you know, a lot of physicists, some people talk about that. That's what life is. It's a series of like a movie, you know, a whole bunch of frames that just happen really super fast. Mm. Uh, and that time is this illusion. And that, that, you know, I mean, the idea of things coming to us from some other place. And then when, when we get to that point in the movie, we have that experience. I mean, that's not really far from the way some physicists actually describe reality. And so mm. to be able to step into that, perspective a little bit is um can be pretty pretty potent uh if Tassan would like to respond with a sound so i'm going to bring her over oh cool welcome if Tassan. there you go yeah unmute and turn on video there so we can see you hi i can't see you too much yet it must be dark there Are you there? Oh, I see. I see a, a something. I saw a something there for a second. She's doing something. Oh. 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 Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Ibsen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm. you so much. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Ibsen. Have a beautiful evening. You too, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so that was just you. exquisite. Is that um, Ibsen? Ibsen? That was just exquisite. Thank yeah. You. Well, um, is there any is there any other questions or anything I can address here? We have, it looks like we have a couple minutes. Um, I'm just looking in the comments again here. Steve said, "Transported to a place of wonder and peace." Nice. And Fabiola was saying, comparing the sounds with animals, an engine with a lion. And then she said, the cry of a kid as a kid being chased by that lion. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds a little harrowing. <laughs> Leah says, an undulating watery pulse line, like an in vitro heartbeat. Room, 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 crackling. Oh, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. writing out of sounds mm -hmm. yeah really cool yeah so um so i guess i guess uh one of the things that i would just like to encourage is is to uh follow Ib Ib Sam's, i hope i'm pronouncing that somewhere in the neighborhood uh example and play you know play you know we all love we all love sounds we all appreciate them uh find ways to play uh, find ways to make sound and find ways to um, make sounds that are reflecting that are reflective of your current reality. Um, and so one of the things that I think is cool about um, instruments like piano, I guess really, especially piano, just because it really is so easy to play, even compared to a guitar, you know, it's just super easy to play a piano. Um, and, and you can explore a lot of your own complexity. 
Um, and that's one of the challenges in, in our lives these days is how do I deal with all this complexity in a way that I can like not drive myself crazy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's really powerful. Um, well, I want to share your free gift with everybody, Daniel. So six ways to stop blocking and start unleashing your musical creativity. Would you like to say a few more words about that? Sure. Um, that is that is a um, a fun little um, collection of of tips that I came up with that uh, may surprise you a little bit. Um, there's some tips in there that you probably won't hear from other uh, music teachers, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so it's a it's a it's an and. Uh, I thought about them all really carefully and, and they are ways that uh, we can get blocked if we do these particular kinds of things. Uh, it can block our, our creative uh, flow. So uh, you might find that interesting. So um, yeah, check it out. You can go to danielbarber.com and um, the, the, um, the little order thing is at the bottom of the homepage on danielbarber.com. Okay, very cool. So I put that in the in the chat so right. you can that as well as on the Facebook Live. Awesome. And if you're listening to this as a recording, just scroll down a little bit below the video and you will see the link for Daniel's free gifts. Cool. Okay. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Daniel. This has been a really beautiful experience. And I'm especially here with the sun setting and the cicadas actually started chirping a bit. That was really, really fun. Well, and you, I mean, doesn't hurt to have you there, so. <laughs> I mean, just beauty all over the place. It's crazy. Well, thank you so much for getting to do this. I really just, I really do appreciate getting to do this. It's super fun for me. Really fun. Yeah, everybody go grab that free gift. As you can see, Daniel's work is amazing. So check that out. Get on his list. Follow him. Receive all his inspiring updates. And um, see, what, see what happens next. What do I do next? What do I do now? <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> Sign up for the free gift. That's what you do now. <laughs> That's right. We'll answer that question for you this time. Yes, exactly. You don't have to think right now. Yeah, you don't have to think. You don't have to feel. Yeah. I'll yeah. just tell you. Um, <laughs> Ibtisam wants to say something important. I have to run really soon, Ibtisam. So as long as you can say it fast, then that's cool. I know you will. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much, David. I wanted to, I really want to share with you. I did exactly what you were speaking about. I followed my heart. I said, what do I want to do at this moment? And the only thing I could think of responding in the language you would totally resonate with was the singing bowl. Uh, and that's what created the magic. Oh, oh, I, no. oh. No. So I just literally followed every step of what you were sharing mm. so thank you and wow. jocelyn knows she just i completely come alive when jocelyn does her summits and it oh. always creates a magic for me mm. and thank you thank you thank you. Mm. thank you thank you what a beautiful gift thank you so good to see you um, much love lots and lots of love thank you mm. amazing yeah Wow. All right. Well, thank you again, Bar or Barber. I almost called you Barber. Thank you again, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Mercado. We're good. <laughs> Have a great evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are, everybody. <laughs> we will be back live with this festival for one more amazing day tomorrow, Friday at 9.30 a.m. New York time. So I will see you all then. We have, of course, incredible, amazing speakers, workshops, music tomorrow too. So don't miss it. Hope to see you all there. Awesome. Love everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.